Now, the two examples thus far cited use improvisatory techniques in only a limited way. The composer in each instance still assumes much of the responsibility for the end result. By the late 1950s, many composers had moved over to the aleatory camp, and the end result in hundreds of compositions was now being determined not by the composer, and certainly not by the composer alone, but by the interpreter in varying degrees of collaboration with the composer. Stockhausen's Zyklus, composed in 1959 for one percussion player, shows how rapidly the tendency towards freer and more improvisatory forms developed. One glance at a page of the score of Zyklus shows that an entire new notational system has been invented for this piece. It is almost a graphic or visual notation far removed from the Beethoven and even Schoenberg examples of our earlier programs. Now, time does not permit the explanation of every symbol on this page, but some of the more prominent ones indicate the marimba, this black one, or this refers to sleigh bells, and this indicates a uh, tom-tom, and here we have a snare drum. But much more relevant to our present discussion is that the piece can be performed this way or upside down. And it is notated by Stockhausen in such a way that this can be readily done, although the music that results in the upside-down version is quite different from the right-side-up version. By the way, the idea of writing a piece so that it can be played forwards and backwards or right-side-up and upside-down is not a new one. Mozart wrote several such pieces back in the late 18th century. Well, further contributing to the aleatory or improvisatory nature of Stockhausen's Zyklus is the fact that first the duration of each segment uh, delineated by these little vertical lines, and there are 30 of these on this page, is determined not by the composer, but by the percussionist. And secondly, the various rectangles above and below the main staff uh, can be incorporated wholly or partially, or for that matter, not incorporated at all in the performance, with the further advice that of the parenthesized rectangles, you see these little parentheses here, uh, only one may be interpolated and not both. Now you can see what great variability in interpretation this affords the performer. And this represents only one page out of 16. In a complete performance of the piece, even the choice of pages is in some respects a free choice of the performer. Let us now listen to a performance of two pages of this score in itself a risky thing on a half-hour television show, since the duration of this page of music can, of course, vary greatly. And we don't even know beforehand whether Mr. Frank Epstein, a member of the Boston Symphony and on the faculty of the New England Conservatory, will play the page this way or this way. Well, let him surprise us.